It's your man Andrew Wood coming back to you and I'm going to be doing my first board game review of what may possibly be the best board game out there on the market you can put your hands on and that board game is Arkham Horror. A board game experience in the Call of Cthulhu genre in the worlds of H.P. Lovecraft and those writers who have written in his vein, at least the earlier ones. Now, this game you can add on additional supplements, additional cards, additional boards like the one you see here. But this is the base uh, of what you need. It's it's um, a game I received from one of my friends, uh, I think two Christmases ago, for a, for a Christmas present. And it, uh, I'm looking for a price here. I think it's about a $50 game. Now, it's from uh, Fantasy Flight Games. And... On the back, it says uh, you can have up to eight players, and it's supposed to take two to four hours. Now, it could take a little longer than that, some of the games that I've played. It lists at 12 plus is the age for these, uh, but I would say 12 is probably an extremely uh, young player for this game. It's quite a complicated game. Uh, here is the rules book, and the rules book itself is 24 pages, and you can see how small that type is there. And uh, on additional pages, you can see the nice, beautiful artwork there. Uh, Cthulhu himself uh, is rising. You get to portray one of 16 investigators, like Harvey Walters. Let you really get a look at that. But there, there are many more. Um, we, my, my gaming group played this game tonight. And instead of playing uh, Mutants and Masterminds, we actually played this the last two weeks on Friday. Um, the... Characters can die during the game, and if your character dies, you can just simply play a uh, different character. I started off with, uh, tonight, I started off with, and we, we lost our game tonight. It's actually quite uh, common to lose in this game. Uh, all of us were eventually devoured. Uh, I was started off playing Ginny Barnes, and the way we with the way we do it, we'll take the all the characters and, and kind of push them off like that, and you get... One pick, and if you don't like your first pick, you can throw it back and make a second pick, but you're stuck with your second character. And you get an automatic throwback for whatever la the last game we played was. If you had a character in the last game, you know, it gets kind of repetitive and boring to play that same character over and over again. But I had Jenny Barnes, and the characters are broken down into quite a few statistics, but the major ones are your sanity and your stamina. And this is going to be a 10-point spread. She has more uh, sanity than stamina. Um, Jenny Barnes, the dilettante. She, uh, it has a large number of quantities of things that you can possess in this game. There's money. There are spells, skills, common items, and unique items. There uh, is a focus, and then there are six stats, and you take your focus right about, you know, and you would put it uh, on each, each you, you use three of them, three of these. And you put them on your stats wherever you want, starting off, and then a character has a focus, which means in a given turn during the upkeep, you can adjust this character's focus of one. Some characters have a focus of two, but I can adjust one of these traits up or down. Now, if I, if I send it down, the other trait is going to increase while one trait decreases. You can have them completely maxed out or more in the middle. Your abilities here are, are speed, sneak. Uh, fight, will, lore, luck, speed gets you around the board. Sneak lets you sneak past monsters and other certain menaces that come up in cards. Fight allows you to physically confront the monsters and to physically confront portals that open up. Will allows you to make your saves against sanity loss and can be useful against some of the great old ones. And there are a few other occurrences um, with some of the cards you'll pull. Lore allows you... To utilize your magical abilities, the spells that you possess, and to use them to inflict damage. Now, often you have to make a lore check to cast a spell, and the spell itself may drain sanity from you. So you have to be very careful, much like in the world of H.P. Lovecraft, uh, calling upon those dark forces of uh, witchcraft and delving into the Cthulhu mythos. It can be very dangerous. And the last one is luck. Now, depending on your character and which ancient one you're fighting, you may take different strategies and different strategies during the game. And, you know, that's that's okay. The number of monsters is limited to three plus the numbers of players. We had myself and two other players, uh, Ken, the guy that, that bought this game for about two years ago, 
and Joe. You can see both Ken and Joe in my Mutual Mastermind videos. They're the last two uh, people that come up. Um, so they were limited to six monsters. You could fight and kill monsters, even some that are, are fairly uh, powerful. You, you use a, something. We used a Elmo um, Easter candy basket for my, my son that happened to be around. My wife provided this for us. Now, there's a lot of a lot of monsters for those of you who are uh, used to Cthulhu Mythos that you're going to see, and you fight these monsters sort of almost like as the the henchmen of the monsters that will come, the the ancient ones, who are number th number eight. You you have eight of them. You know these. Oh, you can play any of these roles. A large number of both male and female characters uh, to pick from. Some of them are um, you know really good at. Oh, spells. Some of them are, are rich. Some of them are poor. Uh, they give you a good number of backgrounds to pick from. Tonight, uh, we had the misfortune of Yog Sothoth. It's very hard, and he whooped our monkey asses, and rightfully so. Uh, he devoured all of us. One of the bad parts about him is not only does the creature have, uh, once it awakens and comes into the world, you have to confront and battle it, but when you are playing the game, it affects the game in certain ways. Uh, Yog Sothoth allows his worshippers, who are cultists, and certain of the other ones affect certain... Oh, here is a, a cultist card. Uh, so this card would say be placed in a locale, and they have movements queued up by these event cards here you draw, and many bad things happen. Uh, I'll read this random one for you. Gangs clean up East Town. Headline: All monsters in the East Town streets or locations are returned to the cup. This would be the cup, which means we get this cultist boom. And if there are six monsters on the board, that could be a big boon for us. But also, a clue appears in the Black Cave, and clues uh, look like this. These are one of the keys to winning the game. If you have clues, if you have uh, enough of them, they they can allow you to reroll dice. They can allow you, if you have five of them, you can go through uh, one of these. And these are gates to another dimension. You have to, much like uh, some of the surreal stories, uh, things like the stories of Randolph Carter, you have to go through that gate with a silver key. And when you can come on the other side, use five clue tokens, you can seal the gate. And then you put an elder sign in that space. No more gates can be opened in that space. And that is a, a way that you can win. You don't have to confront the monster at the end. You can beat these monsters, but they're very, very hard. So it's a game that implies a lot of strategy because you have to work to collectively together as a unit, but also you have to play selfishly for yourself because there's only one winner. However, everyone can lose. And the way we look at it, it is more of a win to survive than to be eaten, to, to be destroyed. My first character, I, I had my first character tonight die. Uh, which was not good for us. We lost. We might have won if I had survived. I had really built myself up. I could have taken Yogg Sofafon quite well, but I ended up getting lost in time and space, which you can get out of normally, but he automatically devours you when you go there. So that's quite, quite a, a jack for us. Uh, Yogg Sofaf. These are eight uh, elder words you get with the game. However, you can acquire more uh, with, with buying some of the additional packs for the game. Which I have not as of yet done, but the, we've been playing it a bit more recently, so I, I may but purchase another one. You can have Yig, uh, a character not created by H.P. Lovecraft. Ithaqua, uh, another one not created by H.P. Lovecraft. I think Ithaqua was created by August Derelith, who was one of the one of the more terrible writers in the H.P. Lovecraft genre, in my estimation. Um, Ithaqua is the Wendigo, um, Haster, uh, l l another uh, non Lovecraft, uh, the King in Yellow Haster. But here we go. Um, obviously, uh, Yog Sothoth is a, a Lovecraft creation. Sub Niggeroth, one of my favorites. The Black Goat of the Woods, and the Black Goat of a Thousand Young. And her young are in this game, of course. You see that quite powerful. As a Thoth. I do enjoy myself as a, th as a Thoth. And our Lathotep, right there. And of course, of course. He who dreams, Cthulhu, and of course, much like you, I cannot pronounce his name as it is ineffable to our inferior vocal cords. But you have many monster tokens in this game, cultists, 
you get quite a bit for the money with this game. There's quite a lot of different pieces. You have Mingo, and you can flip them over on their back. They're quite attractive little pieces. These aren't cheap. This is a nice, sturdy cardboard, and it uh, has, has nice uh, artwork on it. And on the back, it'll tell you a little bit. Um, you know, for example, here's a witch. And for the game period, she looks quite slutty. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, she has magic resistance. Some of the monsters will cause you to make sanity rolls and lose sanity. And they'll do different amounts of, of health. We don't look at what the monsters can do. We, 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 we fight them front up. And then when, when we choose to battle them, that's when the time we flip them over. Um, and monsters have different movement. They're yellow ones. Bordered. Yellow do not move. Black are normal. Uh, blue go to the skies and can come down to you like this night gaunt. Night gaunts can be very terrifying in this particular game. When you lose uh, a night gaunt, um, can uh, an, an, um, a night gaunt can drag you through the nearest gate. Uh, you know, which which at certain points in the game can be very very bad for you. Um, Some of them uh, have special movement, like the Hounds of Tindalus. I really enjoyed that story. Um, but these are, of course, based on the works of H.P. Lovecraft. And you get a lot of different pieces with it. This is board, and there's other boards that you can use as well, purchasing. The figures come on these nice little, little stands that you can slide onto them, and you move around, dictated by your character. The characters have such a different amount of abilities that it really gives you a, a lot to do with them. Uh... You know, you can get skills. You know, this gives you a plus one to your move sneak. You can get these unique items. Like this enchanted blade. It's a magical weapon. Or you can get an elder sign. Elder signs are quite nice. Or holy, holy water to ease your pain. Also, uh, there are, of course, normal standard items. That you can acquire, such as a 45 automatic, and they just give you a plus four on your combat. Only use one hand. You have two hands to, to use. There's also um, you can get blessed and cursed. There's a really a large number of what can happen, and at these different locations around here, and a lot of these you'll recognize: the unnameable, the witch house, uh, the silver twilight lodge. They're going to have these HP Lovecraft tied in. Of course, Arkham Asylum. Uh, I don't think the Joker's there currently, though. Now, at these locations, you're going to have encounters on various cards, depending on where you go, if they enable uh, the river docks. And some of the encounters can be positive. Some can be quite quite horrifying to your, to your mind. There's allies that you can also acquire. Uh, my my uh, favorite one would have to be, not, not in terms of what he does, although I did use him, not, not in this game, but the one we played before that, if you can see him right there, Richard Upton Pickman. And I'm sure you know... You know him as quite well from Pikmin's model. There's uh, a number of them. Uh, let's see, where is the, uh, the other one? Where's the Cop of Cthulhu? Inspector Legrassi. Uh, there, John Legrassi from the Call of Cthulhu. You could also acquire him as an ally. Well, I don't know what he's doing in Arkham. He's from New Orleans. But that's a good look at the board, at the game. It plays wonderful. I like to put some Nox Arcana on in the background while I'm playing this. Indulge the spirit. Try to get into the mindset of the horror of these creatures and thinking back to the having read all the works of H.P. Lovecraft summoning those thoughts that I had in the stories up and sort of reliving them through the game. I strongly recommend anyone read H.P. Lovecraft before getting into this game. Uh, you're going to have a better time with it, but it plays brilliantly. It's very hard. It gives you a level of cooperative play and competitive play at the same time that works absolutely wonderfully in the game. And the fact that you can all lose... And only one of you can win makes the game a, a really interesting one. This is my favorite board game that I've ever played, and I definitely recommend putting your hands on a copy of it.